Well, sweetie, you can't just sit in there for a whole hour and not say anything. Well, maybe the psychiatrist will give you back your money. Yeah, but that's not the point. Problems? Big time. That passes code, that doesn't. I can't see any difference between them. Eight or nine years, you start getting major structural deterioration. Well, how much damage has been done? I don't know. It's hard to say. I figure they've been substituting inferior materials the last week or so. What should we do? Hit the contractor with a $20 million lawsuit. Scare the shit out of him. He'll settle out of court big time. Maybe you should have been a lawyer instead of an architect. You play hardball, especially when someone tries to fuck with me. Well, I knew when I hired you there'd be no compromises. Someone you know? I'll call you later this afternoon. Yeah, okay, thanks, David. Now listen, we're gonna have to speak to somebody about this. I was just passing and I saw the sign. David Kenyon, architect. I suppose I would have known it was one of yours just by looking at it. How have you been, Deidre? How do I look, David? Even from all the way at the top, I knew it was you. Do you often imagine seeing me in crowds? In an airline terminal, or maybe just a face in a passing car? That's how it's been with me. Not one week goes by that I haven't thought I've seen you. You're looking very well. You are just visiting? No, I actually moved here. I checked into the Madison until I can find a suitable apartment. You wouldn't happen to know of any available, would you? No. Did you ever marry again? Yes. We have a five-year-old, a boy. Isn't that nice? <laughs> What's her name? Her name's Molly. Molly. And you? One marriage was enough for me. Are we just gonna stand here all day, or can I buy you a drink? The view must be terrific from the top of the Madison this time of day. Why don't we just go across the street? Okay. Please. Nothing there for me. Since when have you started drinking martinis? Well, I've acquired quite a few habits you don't know about, David. Is there a man in your life? Yes, I've been living with somebody in Palm Beach for the past uh, 11 months. He's a great tennis player. I could never beat him. I could always beat you. Maybe that's why I liked you better. You know, if I marry the guy, you could always build us our dream house. He owns some wonderful lakefront property, and I do remember that you always had an idea for something on the cliffs. You have a good memory. Well, we can't always control what we remember. You know, maybe we have very little control over our lives after all. For instance, here I am walking down the street in a brand new city, and I see your name on a wooden fence. I look up, and there you are. Isn't that just a remarkable coincidence? Was it a coincidence, Deidre? <laughs> What else could it be, David? Oh, goodness, you don't think I tracked you down, do you? Why would you? 
Well, I guess we'll be bumping into each other all over the place. It isn't that big a city. I always thought it was. Why wouldn't you come with me to my hotel for a drink? Were you worried about being alone with me? To tell you the truth, I'm trying to get over this as quickly as possible. Just trying to be polite. Something like that. A formality. Yeah, formality. Why do you always get so angry at me, David? You know, I wonder, are you pretending? Or do you really have no idea what is going on here? You're just playing back old tapes, David. Maybe I am. I just don't like the way I feel when I'm around you. But Molly makes you feel good? <clears throat> That's why I married her. Mm. You know, I really don't think divorced people should see each other, particularly when there's no kids involved. Just cut the cord, pretend it never happened, pretend I'm dead. I gotta go. Oh, it's still my treat. A real pleasure, David. Mm. Well, I finally got you to touch me. Stop it, man. You're making a fool of yourself. If you'd really wanted to die, you would have cut deeper. Suppose I had. Would you have sent flowers? You run along now, David. You know where to reach me. I've already forgotten. <laughs> You like drinking alone? Are you married? The truth now. Yeah. And you may sit down. I'm Frank. I'm Molly. Molly? That's a good old-fashioned name. You having trouble with your boyfriend? Oh, well, that was my husband. He thinks I drank too much. Oh. Well, I don't have a problem with that. Waiter. You know what? Why don't we pick up a bottle and go somewhere and enjoy it privately? Why didn't I think of that? place you're gonna love. I'm sure you do. So, uh, any little kids or shouldn't I ask? One boy, Michael. He's five. People say he's the spitting image of me. I've got three myself. You know, it's really great finally being honest for a change. No bullshit. You're a very unusual woman. <laughs> I'm so glad you noticed. Say my name. Molly. 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 Oh. Molly. Did you do something wrong? No, I've got a better idea. Hmm. A lot of two last thing? Oh, no, it's just right. You know what I want you to do for me? stronger than women. There's a lot of strong women out there. Guys got to be careful. You know what, Frank? That's very right. That's very, very true. girl today, Molly.
Dr. Lily and Jonas. You've reached my private line. Please leave a message at the tone. Pick up the phone, Dr. Jonas. It's Deirdre. I know you want to talk to me. Yes, Deirdre. I'm here. You knew I'd call sooner or later, didn't you? Are you all right? Are you taking your medication? Yes, I'm getting my medication. You know, there's some wonderful doctors here in New York. I'm being looked at with ever-loving care. Why don't you give me their names? Uh, they should talk to me. No, no, no. I don't want you to talk to them. It's much more fun letting them find out as we go along. Well, then uh, let me have your phone number, and then you and I can chat sometimes. Yeah, don't worry, Doc. I'll keep in touch. You never should have left before you completed treatment, Deirdre. I was doing you a favor, Lily, and I thought you were falling for me. I'll bet you're getting very excited just listening to my voice right now. Would you like to have some telephone sex, Doctor? Why are you trying to provoke me? I'm completely naked right now, and I can feel your warm, manly hands. I can feel them moving so slowly, searching for the wetness between my hands. You can't disconnect a poor girl before she's had her little orgasm, Lillian. It's so fucking selfish of you to pretend that you're not listening. I love your mouth, Lillian. It's a man's mouth. Those thin lips. I want to feel those thin lips all over. Faith, Faith to, to grow. grow. You know that part. I that. Do you have another hard day? Say that. I just seem so exhausted lately. Yeah, I've been overdoing it. So, did you see Dr. Wilkins today? I don't like him. You don't like him? Well, he likes you. He wants to be your friend. He asks too many questions. But you didn't like any of the other doctors. I told you I wouldn't hit any more kids. The idea is to find out why you do it in the first place. Why are you so angry? You know, if you keep your elbows tucked in and your hands closer together on the bar, that should help. Oh, yeah, it's much better, thanks. I bet you could do a dozen more. In my dreams. Are you one of the trainers? Oh, gosh, no. I just moved here from Chicago and joined the club. I like the fact that there are no men around to hit on you. I knew I hadn't seen you here before. I'm Lillian. Dr. Lillian Jonas to some people. You're a physician? No, a psychiatrist. I've spent most of my time out here looking for office space. Your male patients must have fun in their sessions. <laughs> oh, God, I only see kids. My looks don't seem to make much difference to them. Really? Do you want to go have some juice? Well, sure. Why not? husband drowned I knew I couldn't live in that same town so I turned my practice over to my associate and uh, here I am Thanks. oh there I've got a few hundred of those I can throw away now I wonder if I could talk to you professionally 
I have a little boy, and he seems to really be having problems. Have you been seeing someone about him? Yeah, one doctor after another, but he resists all of them. Well, that's not unusual. How old is your boy? He's six in January. I don't know. He's incredibly bright. He just seems angry all the time at me and his father. And he started getting aggressive when he was in preschool. But three months ago, he attacked another child with a pencil. I'm familiar with similar cases. Would you see him? Oh, no, I haven't set up my practice yet. Yeah, but in some ways, that actually could be an advantage. A doctor's office isn't always the ideal place to work with a child. Is he your only kid? Mm-hmm. Have you been married before? No, it's the first time for both of us. That's very unusual, so much divorce nowadays. Yeah, I suppose so, yeah. It's really nice to know that you were his first, isn't it? Yeah, we only dated a couple months before we got married. But it was like we both waited for each other, you know? Hmm. Yes, I believe that there's only one right person for everyone. And you mustn't let that person get away. Well, I, I would like to meet your son. And your husband someday. Finds out that she's a psychiatrist. Yeah. What's her name? Lillian Jonas. What's she charge? Seventy an hour. But she's not going to bill us until she gets her office set up. She must be saving a fortune in overhead. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think she could really help. God, I hope so. She asked about me. Yeah. She said, "Where'd you see her? She's a knockout." I probably wouldn't even notice. Yeah, right. In your dreams. My God. <laughs> the doctor is showing results already. Mm. It was like being in bed with someone else that really scared me. Look, your husband may have a side to him that he's kept hidden. Something he could have passed on to your son. Is that possible? It is. We are learning more and more about what's carried genetically. Would you excuse me for a moment?
something wrong? I just feel like I've betrayed him by telling you all this. No, no, I'm getting to know your husband better. That's what's really important. Hey, I'm gonna see you through this. Promise. Cool. Who's she? This is Lillian, my new friend. Hello, Michael. Oh, what a strong handshake you've got there. <laughs> oh, let's go. Hands up. Hands up. Do you feel like doing something special, Michael? Like what? Well. Have you ever been on a ferry? Where does it go to? Just around the bay. What's it to do there? Nothing, absolutely nothing. That's what makes it so wonderful. It's getting really chilly out here. Do you all want some hot chocolate? Oh, that would be great. Thank you. I'm going to stay here with her. Okay. Is the water cold? Why? Do you want to jump in? It looks easy enough to swim to shore. Well, it does, but they say that the current is so strong it'll just pull you out to sea. Why can't I see the sharks? Well, they're in there, believe me, Michael. Sometimes you just can't see the things that are really dangerous. I heard a shark attack you. You're supposed to hit it on the nose. You know what? And I bet you could too. You're very, very strong. I can hurt people bigger than me. How does that make you feel? My mom and dad think I'm bad. What do you think? I know I'm bad. Uh-huh. That's all right, because a lot of people think I'm bad, too. They take me to these doctors to make me feel better, but they're just trying to find out how really bad I am. You know what, Michael? That's all right, because I fooled them. I've always fooled them. And I can teach you how, too. You want to learn? Good. Let's go look at the paddle wheel. Michael, I'm so happy that you and Lily and her friends. She's gonna pick you up from school and take you to the beach, okay? Thanks so much. I'm sure I'll find my key. Oh. <laughs> you know, we are so much alike, Michael, the two of us. We're always getting into trouble. You mean you had other kids, too? No, with me, it was water. Terrible things always happened around the water. I mean, somebody drowned? You know, I don't really like to talk about it that much. Come on, I tell you stuff. Okay. Let's see. Well, it was on a beach called Nantucket, and there was this terrible, terrible riptide. And uh, I couldn't reach her. She was my best friend, my roommate. I bet you did. 
No, as a matter of fact, everybody felt really sorry for me. Even her boyfriend. And we got married later on. Do you think that, that was the wrong thing to do? Why, if it wasn't your fault? Michael! Look, there's your mother. Go and run to her and give her a big, big hug, and that way she'll let us play together more. Go on. Hey, Tom. You're back real early today, Mr. Kenya. Big dinner tonight. Got to change into a tux. even more handsome than in his photographs. Introduce Daddy to a new friend. Daddy, this is Lillian. Michael, go to your room. Lillian? Your name is Lillian? Yes, it is. You have a charming boy and a wonderful wife. I want you to grab your stuff and get the hell out of here. Grab your stuff and get the hell out of here. David, what's going on? And get out of my home. David. I'm tired of this bullshit. Let's move. David! Uh, you know where to find me. David, what is going on? Now you listen to me carefully, you crazy bitch. You stay the fuck away from my family. Your family, David? Why didn't you just tell them who I was, huh? Is it because I don't exist in your life? You were never married before and you were never arrested for trying to kill me, were you? Were you? Were you? Why did you do that to her? Are you out of your mind? She's done nothing but try to help us. She's pulling some kind of shit on us. What kind of a doctor doesn't even have an office of her own? Is that all? She's a con artist. I'm not sure she's even a doctor. Based on what? I checked with the State Medical Society. They have no record of her. She's not even licensed. She's new here. She's a con artist. I don't want you to have anything more to do with her. I'm sorry. I gotta get dressed. No! You can't start this and then just walk away. Look, Molly, we know absolutely nothing about her. She knows everything about us. God knows what you two talk about. Did you mention what happened the other night? About what happened in bed? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Did you mention it? She's treating Michael, not me. But you talked about it, right? Women talk about personal feelings when they're together. Ma Molly, there are all kinds of phonies out there practicing medicine. I'm just trying to protect you, that's all. Yeah, trying to tell me that I don't have any sense of judgment? I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about her. I thought you had a business dinner. I'll be back before 11. Whatever. Do you have a Dr. Jonas, a Dr. Lillian Jonas registered here? Are you Mr. Kenyon? Yes. She's in room 804. She's expecting you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, dear. <laughs> I took the liberty of ordering up your favorite champagne. I want you to uh, shut up. 
And I want you to listen for a change. Certainly, David. I want you to stay away from my son. And I want you to stay away from my wife. Your son, Michael, and your little wife, Molly, happen to like me a lot. Perhaps a lot more than they like you at the moment. Try to focus on what I am saying to you. You are not going to wreck my life again. Go on. You feel like smashing something, don't you? Smash something. That's always how it starts, isn't it? You belong in that goddamn institution. Do you see how wonderful it is having a history as a mental patient? I'm not responsible for one goddamn thing I do. I'm a certified nut. I wouldn't even stand trial, do you hear me? Wouldn't even stand trial. Are you threatening me? That's my little secret. Well, as of tonight, there will be no more secrets. I'm telling Molly everything. So fuck you. David, wait. Let me make it easier for you this time, huh? huh? What are you doing? <laughs> My, you'd have a lot of explaining to do, David. Get away from that window, Dieter. Come on. One tiny little shove. David, do it. Come on, do it. Get away from the window. Come on. Just one tiny shot, that's all it takes. Come here. Come on, do it. What do you want? I want to satisfy the man I love, David. Come on, do it. You've always wanted to do it, haven't you? To punish me for what I did to marry him. <laughs> Come on, let's go swimming. Oh, yes, you do. Come on, let go of her Come on. <laughs> do anything. Oh, come on. Way in the back of your mind. You've always known. You've always known. I wanted you. And she had you. You understand me? Yeah, help me! Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did everything. It was so easy to hold her down that night. She was so goddamn drunk, and the water was so cold. You saw that. No. Yes. Come on. One tiny little shove. Come on. Come on. Do it. Come on. Do it. <laughs> you possibly do to me, David, that I don't want you to do, huh? <laughs> you are not going to wreck my life! <laughs> I bet you're all hard, aren't you? Oh. <laughs> How many women would have committed murder for you? Huh? Aren't you even fucking flattered, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> I'm going to have you arrested for murder. <laughs> Excuse me. What's the matter with you two? Haven't you ever seen a couple after a good fuck before? David, you won't tell Molly, and neither will I. We both want this to last. what happened. He had no right to treat you that way. I don't want to talk about it. What happened? Nothing. Nothing. What happened to you? Really? Look, I knew if I saw you that I just might fall apart. Please don't mention any of this to David. What does this have to do with David? Well, he, he came to my room at the Madison last night, but not to talk about Michael. I asked him to leave. <laughs> That's when he grabbed me. 
Daddy hit me all over. You're saying he put these marks on you? I'm saying that he raped me. He wouldn't do that. I don't believe you. He has a birthmark on the uh, on the inside of his left thigh, doesn't he? Why didn't you call the police? Why? Don't you know because of you, Molly? Because of you and Michael, I didn't want to hurt you. Look, I walked into your life and I'm going to walk out of it now. But please, please be careful of him around the little boy. A man who did what he did is just capable of absolutely anything. <laughs> Assuming, of course, we get some cooperation. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. David. You you all know my wife. Uh, hello. Can I see you alone, please? Excuse us. Certainly. Now, are we still planning on going in with phase two? What's going on? Is there something wrong with Michael? Something? No, he's fine. I never realized what a good actor you were. What are you talking about? You don't remember going to visit Lillian last night? So, uh, I got the plan. And, uh, what did she tell you? Then you don't deny being there. No, I don't deny being there. I was trying to protect my family. I wanted to get rid of her once and for all. By attacking her? Is that what she told you? I saw the marks all over her body. She's a liar. She's a fucking... She's a fucking liar. She told me you raped her. Jesus Christ. And you believed her. You believed her. How would she know about your birthmark? She ought to know. I was married to her for three years. She was my first wife. What? Her name's not Lillian. It's Deidre. Why didn't you tell me you were married before? I was ashamed it was a sick relationship. I just wanted to... I never wanted to see her. And you didn't feel close enough to tell me about it? No, I did not. Why is she pretending to be somebody else? I have no idea. She's been institutionalized. It was over seven years ago. One night, she pushed me so far, I wrapped my hands around her throat. If the neighbors hadn't called the cops, I might have killed her. And that's exactly what she wanted. Were you arrested? Yeah. I plea bargained. I got 11 months probation. After the divorce, she had a complete breakdown. I split. I disappeared. I didn't want to know. I told her so much about us. Molly, look. Look, I was very wrong not to tell you the truth. But there is absolutely nothing between us. She's been planning this for weeks. She's been following us. She's sick. I'm going to call the police. No, no, no police. They'll never believe me. The Lord knows what she's been saying to Michael, you know? Son.
Yes, hello. Um, my name is Jennifer Thomas. I'm with East Tech Securities. May I speak to the male head of the household, please? Yes, I'll put my husband on. Who is it? Hello? Yes, hello. My name is Jennifer Thomas. I'm with East Tech Securities. May I speak to the male head of the household, please? Oh, um, my husband died years ago. Uh, it's just me now. May I help you? Um, no, no. I'm sorry to have bothered you. Good day. Your lease is terminated. There must be something we can do. There's nothing we have to do. We can put it behind us. It's over. It's finished. She can't touch us. All we have to do is just hang in there. You must have loved her once, though. Look, Molly, back then I drank. I drugged. I was crazy. I was into this whole self-destructive lifestyle. She was part of it. I changed my life around. She's not part of me anymore. Let's get this stuff cleaned up. It's almost time for a bath. I want to see Lily. Lillian is gone. And I won't accept any rudeness to your mother. Now, you pick up your toys and you do as you're told, young man. You just don't want me to have a friend. David, don't. He's just trying to make you lose your temper. I wonder where you learned that from. Maybe I should go out in the balcony and scream a couple of times. Is that acceptable behavior? How do you know she's gone? Because I called the hotel. <sighs> I'm sorry. I don't know what's the matter with me. Let's just get this behind us. She's gone now. Have I told you how much I love you? Hmm. I guess she found the apartment she was looking for. right in here. From a legal standpoint, there's very little I can do. Can't we get a restraining order? Oh, Molly, she has better grounds for getting one than we do. With David's prior history of violence towards her, believe me, a judge would not look too kindly upon such a request. That was over seven years ago. You've got to understand the law tends to be black or white. When you plea bargain that case, you essentially corroborated all of the allegations she made against you. You were fortunate not to have done time. She's pretending to be a doctor. You mean to tell me there's no laws against that? She hasn't taken any money for treatments. There's no laws to protect people from fucking lunatics? David, 
I strongly advise you to have no further contact with her whatsoever. I'll try having a word with her. You think it'll do any good? Hmm? I know what she wants. That would be great if you did that. It might help. Great. Hello, Deirdre. I, um, I came here to give you the opportunity to to commit yourself for, for treatment. I, I feel that you're a danger to yourself and others. What are you talking about with others? Well, your ex-husband and his new wife. Look, their, their lawyer called me in Chicago and <laughs> filled me in on the details. And you just came rushing to the rescue, didn't you? Deirdre, I, I don't want to have to go to the authorities with this. You can't go to the authorities with any of this. There is such a thing as patient-client privilege. Which can be set aside if someone's personal safety is threatened, which in this case I think it may be. Do you have any specific evidence of my violent behavior? Out of bed, I mean. What about your sister? What about my sister, Lillian? I helped pull her out of the water, and I was the one who gave her mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitations until those lifeguards came. And then you helped console David. <sighs> you know what? You've known about all of this, all of this for years, and now suddenly it adds up to murder? You know, since we're making up stories here, I'm sure I could fabricate a few of myself. Um, let's see. Oh, how you abuse the patient-client relationship in order to satisfy your deviant sexual appetite, huh? I am sure that more people will be likely to believe that you are a goddamn dyke than that I'm a murderer. What do you think, Lillian? What do you think? I think we'll see. Wait, wait. I'll go with you, okay? I'll sign myself in. Just give me a couple moments to get dressed. Deirdre? What's going on? Deirdre? was it that you always said to me at the end of each session, Dr. Jonas? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry, but your time is up. It's Deidre Kenyon to see you, sir. Is she alone? Yes. All right, send her in. Hello. Miss Kenyon. Mr. Endicott. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. I was anticipating your attorney. Please, come in. Well, thank you. Um, what would I need an attorney for? Isn't David coming to the meeting? I didn't think that would be uh, terribly constructive. I'm sure you've been hearing some terrible things about me, Mr. Endicott. Um, you may as well know that I've had to contact Dr. Jonas in Chicago. 
And make her aware that you've been using her name. What did she say about me? <sighs> she was very discreet. She told me that she couldn't discuss her patients. You know, that's Lillian. She's always so professional. Now, I understand that you've rented an apartment in the same building as the Kenyans. Well, yes, I have. You know, actually, Mr. Endicott, that was David's idea. He wanted me close by so we could continue seeing one another. Am I to infer, then, that you and David are having an affair? Well, I just knew that you wouldn't believe one word I said with all these terrible stories, Mr. Endicott, so, um, well, I brought you something. Um, may I? Please. Thank you. I don't know if you're into what is politely called, um, well, adult entertainment. Was David aware this was being made? Well, why? Is secretly taping your lover a crime in this state? Does he know about this tape? Does he know about it, Mr. Endicott? Of course he knows about it. It was his idea. <clears throat> Miss Kenyon, I, um... Look, Mr. Endicott, please. Your client has obviously been lying to you, just as he's been lying to his wife, and I... Well, I just really don't think you want to get in the middle of this. It was a pleasure. Um, I appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Well, of course. Please, I'll Thank see you. you out. Hey, Miles. No, you're not interrupting. What's up? I've been called to New York to complete a merger. I think it'd be wise if uh, you got somebody else to advise you on this matter. A merger? Miles, why are you talking to me like I was born yesterday? Why are you ducking out on me? Right, yeah. Did you talk to her? She got to you, didn't she? What did she tell you? <sighs> yeah, all right. Um, the woman has an entirely different version of what's going on, okay? With evidence to support it. I think you should know that she taped the entire thing, David. Jesus Miles, we made some tapes when we were married. I completely forgot about them during the divorce. Listen, you're going to have to do better than that, okay? Even I have to draw the line somewhere, and for me, this is it. Please, just find somebody else. Look, Mom. Thanks for being my friend. Is there a problem, Mr. Kenyon? No, there's no problem. It's an emergency meeting. Hello, who's speaking? Hi, Michael. You recognize my voice, don't you? My mom's here. I really, really miss you, Michael. I'm sure you'd like to see me, wouldn't you? Yes. Would you like to see me right now? Yes. Well, here's what you do, honey. You go out on the terrace. Okay. Mm. Who's on the phone? Hello? Hello? Deidre! I'm in here. Deidre! You can forget it, Deidre. The only thing I want from you is that goddamn tape! Come on, David. We can make more tapes, huh? Better than before. I mean, remember how we used to enjoy watching ourselves? Do you? Where is that <laughs> goddamn tape? Give it to me! Get the fuck off me! It's in my purse. Inside, sweetie, and don't come out of your room, okay? What 
<laughs> I thought she might like her own copy, so uh, I mailed the bitch one. <laughs> You're fucked. <laughs> You're fucked. <laughs> What's going on? Here? I understand what's going on. I don't want to see you anymore. What is that? It's nothing. It's nothing. I thought it was something else. It's nothing. It's nothing. I thought it was something else. It's a part two. I could use a few laughs right now. I mean, that's what it is, isn't it? I don't know. What else would it be? What are you so afraid of? Look, I went over there because Miles told me that, that she had a tape from when we were married. Now give it to me! Yeah, yeah, I was over there waiting for you half naked. But don't yes. run that! <laughs> don't run that tape! anymore. It's just a setup. It's just a setup. Gin and tonic, make it a double. Yeah. exactly what you want. And you're going to enjoy every minute of it. Oh, yeah. Is that all you've got? Fucking sissy. No. may hurt a bit. Just bear with me. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Paramedics are going to have to take you to the hospital. You need stitches. No, no, I don't want to go to the hospital. Who did this to you? It was my own fault. I shouldn't have let him in the door. He attacked me years ago in New York and... 
He tried to kill me. You can't protect this man, because sooner or later, he will kill you. I think I realize that now. Give us his name, and we'll make sure he never hurts you again. Are you David Kenyon? Yes. I have a warrant for your arrest. What? Turn around. We're going to cuff you. What did he do? Why don't you ask your husband? I have no idea. Ask him what he did to Dr. Lillian Jonas. You ought to take a look at her. What's happening, Daddy? I never touched her. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say or do may be used against you in a court of law. Lower. Call Miles. One will be one to two. Yeah. The hospital's going to want to take a couple x-rays. Just to make sure you don't have a concussion. Stay there, man. Roger. Uh, Let's go, Mr. Kenyon, in the car. Come on. Watch your head. So you never laid a hand I on her? I never laid a hand on her. She did it to herself. The doctors say it's a physical impossibility for those injuries to be self-inflicted. The black and blue marks on her arm are several days old. Did you beat her up that time, too? She was trying to jump out of a window. I was trying to stop her. So you did put the marks on her arm. You admit that. I am not answering any more stupid questions without the presence of my lawyer. Nowadays, they throw the book at men who assault women. You're looking at six years. Maybe more if the DA decides you were trying to kill her. She wants me to kill her. That's the whole point. This woman is completely deranged. Look, I'm not answering any more questions without the presence of my lawyer. Sit down! Right! Get this asshole out of my sight. I thought you were through with me. Molly came to see me. I guess if she still believes in you, well, I can at least give it a shot. Where are we going? I'm gonna go to the cottage, sweetie. Why don't you run in your room and get some toys for the car, okay? I'm gonna finish packing here. $150,000 bail? I never touched her. She set the whole damn thing up. And a restraining order. You are not to approach Deidre in any way or you will be picked up again. Miles, this woman is a cuckoo bird. She is a nutcase. She is completely off her rocker. Am I getting through to you? She set me up. You have a history, David. Has this hit the papers? Yeah, the shit hit the fan. Belcher called me this morning. He's evoking the morality clause and he's taking your name off the building. He can't do that! Jesus Christ! I'm afraid he can't. <laughs> I called the hospital. Deidre was treated and released. She's back out there. Oh, that's just great. Molly? Michael? Do 
Dear David, I don't feel very safe here. I'm taking Michael to the cottage. Join us when you can. All my love, Molly. Where is Daddy coming? No, sweetheart, he's got a lot of work. And I'm sure if he finishes, he'll come see us. Can I call him right now? You can try, but I bet he's not back yet. You're kidding. God, you will never work out here. What are you yelling at me for? I'm not yelling at you, sweetheart. Oh, there's just a bunch of stuff going on right now, okay? But you didn't do anything wrong. Can we make a fire? That's a good idea. Say what? Why don't you take these things mm -hmm. and put them in your room? Mm -hmm. And don't just squash them in the drawer, okay? Okay. Fold them up nice, all right? Okay. Keep the change. Well, thanks a lot, buddy. How could you do that to that woman? Did Daddy ever show you how to skip rocks? No. He has some really flat ones like that. They work best. Okay, come on. When he comes out, you can show him. Molly? Molly. Like this? Good. Michael? Dad, it really looks like it's going to start raining. We should go inside. Come on. Bet I can beat ya. I bet I can catch you. I'm going to get you. Ah! I'm so happy. Oh, 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 oh,
you hurt her? Wham, wham, wham. Molly, Michael. <laughs> Michael. I can't get out. Daddy. David. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Oh, don't worry, David. I kept her alive so she could watch us finish what we started. Come on, David, do it. Do it. You're never gonna leave me alone, are you? Are you? <laughs> you bitch! No! Oh, fucking dead, you fucking bitch! <laughs> I'm taking you back to that nut house where you belong. <laughs> Get rid of you once and for all. Ah! Michael! 